friends, the Tobago Mission of Seventh-day Adventists invites you to Let's Talk About Him. This is an island-wide online evangelistic series with Evangelist Roger Allen. It begins on Sunday, 13 September 2026 p.m. nightly. You can join us via our live streams on YouTube at ASI Media Tobago and on Facebook Live at ASI Tobago Chapter. Join us and be blessed from the comfort of your homes. Whatever your cares or your fears, give them all to Jesus and watch him turn your sorrows into joy. This is an invitation with your name on it. You cannot afford to turn it down. Good evening, everyone. We want to welcome you here once more again as we continue to talk about Jesus. We are excited. We are filled with joy tonight because tonight God is going to do something really wonderful here in the Tobago Mission. We want to welcome all of you who are joining in with us from different parts of the world. We hope that you had a wonderful day today. Indeed, it was a day of rain, a day of showers here in Tobago, and we thank God for the showers. We want to shout out happy birthday at this time to Elder Diamond Andrews. Uncle Andrews, we want to say happy birthday from the entire Tobago constituency, and we hope that God continues to indeed to bless you richly as you grow and continue to serve him. Tonight we have a special program planned for you, and we want you to just find that comfortable seat wherever you may be, in your home, wherever you are looking at us, just find a comfortable spot because tonight you would be on, you have to be on the edge of your seat because tonight is going to be a bumper night for Jesus. Tonight you are going to receive a wonderful blessing, so we invite you to share the link, send out you know, the links to your friends and to your family and let them know that something big is happening in Tobago tonight. We want to let you know that we are so happy that you are joining us. And for those of you who may be joining for the first time, welcome. Welcome to our Let's Talk About Him evangelistic series with Roger Allen, evangelist Roger Allen. He has been doing a magnificent job for the kingdom of God. And tonight would be no exception. So we invite you to really join in with us and take part in our service this evening. You know, we have a nice jingle that we use when we come here. We want you to learn this jingle because we're going to be using this jingle for the next three weeks. And it's a simple jingle that, you know, encourage us to talk about Jesus, you know, talk about him when we are on our jobs, talk about him when we are on the street, talk about him wherever we go. Do you remember it from last night? Well, let's just do it a little bit before we go into the rest of our program. It goes simply like this. Let's talk about him. Mm -hmm. Jesus to you we bring. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about him. He is the king of kings. Oh, yes. Let's talk about him. Mm -hmm. Send out the links and thing. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about him. Tell your friends to join in one more time. Let's talk about him. Mm -hmm. Jesus to you we bring. Oh, yes. Let's talk about him. Mm -hmm. He is the king of kings. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about him. Mm -hmm. Send out the links and thing. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about him. Oh, yes. Tell your friends to join in. Why not shout out a friend right now? Why not shout out a family member? Let them know that something good is happening on ASI Media. As we go into the rest of our program, we pray that you would enjoy it. Sit back, relax, and allow God to speak into your lives tonight. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we have a word of prayer. Great God, we are so thankful for the blessings of this day. We are thankful, O oh God, that you have been so good to us. You are a good God. And we want to thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity that we have to talk about you, to talk about Jesus, to spread this gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray, O oh God, that as we share this message of salvation, as we share this message of love, that some man, some woman, some boy or some girl would be drawn into a closer relationship with you tonight. May tonight's message, O oh God, be one that would spew us unto righteousness. May we be drawn closer to you and we pray by 
by the end of this service, our hearts would really be watered. We pray that you will bless our entire viewing audience tonight, and may we have a wonderful time sitting at your feet. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
to see what the Lord has done for us. See what a mighty God he is. I want you to see what the Lord has done for us. See, my Lord, what a mighty God he is. The world was a tumbling. The was a tumbling. The was a tumbling. Oh, praise his holy name. The was a tumbling, tumbling down. The was a tumbling. The was a tumbling. people I want to invite you all to pray with me at this time loving father and God of mankind we are so excited and happy that we can come into your presence this evening we want to give you thanks and praise for your great love towards us your children you have protected us from harms accidents and dangers you have protected us against the COVID-19, and even though we are alive, there are so many who 
are dead today and we are not too certain that they have accepted you as personal Savior and King. But this evening we have the opportunity to accept you as our Lord and Savior and King and we give you thanks for that. We ask, O God, as we listen to your word through your manservant, Elder Allen, that you will anoint him first. Touch his lips, his heart, his mind, uh, so that every word that proceed out of him will come directly from your throne. Anoint him, O God, and bless him. And as he prepares to speak to us, prepare our hearts also to receive your message and to give ourselves to you. And this evening we want to give you thanks and praise. All the glory and all the praise as we prepare to listen to your word. Help us to accept you this evening as Lord and Savior and King of our lives. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to invite you to listen with us. Special music coming to you from Sister Shakila McKenna. Friends, don't be discouraged. He is still the same. He'd soon be here. He'd roll back the stone and he'd call out your name. When he's gone at last, and all hope is gone. Lord, we don't understand why you've waited so long. But his way is God's way. Come again, friends, to mm-hmm. another light moment with the evangelist, mm-hmm. Roger Allen. That's right. And I'm his wife, Natasha Brown Allen. And in case you missed our first installment, well, you did miss a little bit because he spoke about his conversion. Yeah. Yes. And his baptism. Mm-hmm. He was first a Methodist. Mm-hmm. And then he became a Seventh-day Adventist right. and got baptized in 1996. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, we reached a point where... He went to USC and he graduated in 2017 Mm -hmm. to Bachelor's of Arts in Theology. And since then till now, he has been very active in um, campaigns, both locally and Mm -hmm. internationally. I've been with him on some of those exploits, but we're going to look specifically at 2019 because 2019 was perhaps one of the most um, uh, you could say exciting exciting uh, and active, active and active years yeah. yeah yeah so let's have so tell me about that uh, the, the, my first crusade for 2019 was in Moriah yes and that was an exciting moment for me because there is where I got baptized and also there is where I kept my first crusade and the same place I kept my first crusade is the same place I kept the crusade. Yeah. Um, it was, so that must I, have been Must have been. You know, I, I saw God. Both, yeah. I saw how God put things in place. And, and, you know, when Pastor Frederick asked me about that, I said, wow, I would really take this opportunity yeah. to know. And it was, it was a nice experience going back home. The same persons, the guys I used to land with on the block, you know, they will come and listen. It may not come under the tent, but they will come by the road and they would listen and, mm. you know. I said, wow. And it was a really, really nice experience. Yes. And, um, you know, I just thank God that, you know, he has been working on me. And It's always good, you know, when you, um, when you get baptized and you can go back to a mm-hmm. place that, you know, 
where you were birthed spiritually yes, yes, and yes. then you know share how God has really tremendously been blessing you in your Christian experience in your Christian walk and after that we mm-hmm. went to Bell Garden right yes we went to Bell Garden um, Bell Garden was 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 a, a, was something totally different because uh, the, the the tent were on the fo- was on the football field yeah and all the persons in the village who they will come out at night and sit on their porch and the, or the veranda they would listen to the messages they will comment on it after but they would not come under the tent you know but you know how we are in, in Tobago at the world at large um, and it was I have seen God just work you know, driving safety and how we put things in place and there were a lot of hiccups but you know people get down and they prayed and together and Pastor Thomas really moved. Pastor Reynolds Thomas really moved with the team. Yeah. Get people together yeah. and just go forward and it was a success. You know and after that people, we went to um I think Guyana, this, right? Yes, the same week right. we, we went to Guyana. Mm-hmm. Um this was plenty experience in one mm-hmm. <laughs> because um first we, we when you get to guyana you have to go over into parima um parima is one of the amerindian um villages um it was it was awesome yes it was an it, experience it was an, it was an experience it was two experiences in one yes um, i remember us going on this very small plane this, this small plane yes. you know um well we had two translators um sister shaman born and sister um Althea yeah. Bombiri, and they were there translating for us, and you know, it it, it was an and we had to cross a river to get across a river. Yes, what, what in a I, little in a little little boat. It's, or. <laughs> it's it's the only place I've ever let, let me see. Yes, I don't think I've ever visited anywhere any place else, anywhere else. But it's when you get to Parima, um, you 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 pay no bills. Yeah. And it's yes. like a forties of heaven. You pay no bills. Yes. You yeah, pay no you rent. Pay no bills. Um, yeah. you, you forget about internet and all these kind of things. It's just a wonderful place. Everything is organic. Yeah. And I think that that is. I, I think. And, it, and most of all, the people. Yes. Are very, very. That's what I was about to say. Yes. Very. Yes. Yes. And orderly. And very loving. Yeah. You know, that that was an experience. Yeah. It was. An and experience. then after that. After that, uh, when I came back, I I went to the Bahamas. Right. Well, this was a different experience, um, because Bahamas is a different culture. So you now have to learn the culture, and you now have to fit your message into the culture, and it's an extremely nice, wonderful mm-hmm. place. Um, so, so you came from a country kind of side yes, in Parima, and then into, you went into a city mm-hmm, in into Bahamas. A city, into Bahamas, yeah. And you know, you just go and you just pray to God that God just move people. Mm. Um, the the one of the things that I saw how the devil could really snatch people or prevent them from giving their life to the Lord. Um, many persons came and said they would like to get baptized. And you know, mm. we, Kevin and I, we, we we took their names, and while we were there, they confirmed. And on the Sabbath, when they was to get baptized, um, Bahamas is a place that you will get a lot of. They will lose electricity often, mm-hmm. so the electricity went, and a lot of things couldn't take place. So some of the persons who were supposed to be baptized did not get the chance to give their life to the Lord. And as soon as we left Bahamas. Hmm. Um, the hurricane yeah, came yeah. And, and you know, I believe some persons got, you know, lost, lost within stuff, that yeah. within that hurricane. Yeah. And uh, you know And they were given an opportunity to accept opportunity, the Lord and know, some of them didn't. Yeah, they didn't um, yeah. And, 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 and some of them may have gone to Christ let's pray. Yeah, when when I came back and I said, Lord you are really because we were the ASI team, Lord Lord move us out just in time. When we get back as soon as we get back I think we got back on we got back on Wednesday. When we came back was Wednesday, and the weekend it was the hurricane in Bahamas. You know, um, and it, I, it I remember sad. I remember you it had a sad. wonderful experience about um, Guyana, yeah. where this lady wanted money to pay off her bills. Oh yes, you can tell us about oh, that. Yep, that was when I I went to Guyana in 2017. Oh, okay. In 2017, there was a I was preaching one night, um, how to pay off your bills. And I asked everyone to 
walk with whatever bill you have write it on a paper symbolically and just walk with it and we are going to pray so the power is never in me the power yes, is always Lord. in god yeah the power to make the it po work power to make it in work. the holy spirit in the holy spirit <laughs> and you know while we were there that that night we pray and ask god to just pour out his power and work miracles in people's lives and the lady came the next day and she said pastor i i needed a certain amount of money and this is what i had and let's say that it was about a let's see let's just use a figure about a million dollars and she had five hundred thousand and she said i prayed and i believe that god is going to work, work a miracle out. and mm -hmm. when she came and she laid that on the altar we prayed the church prayed and god performed his miracle and the end of the day she had that money to pay all the bills and she was you know Amen. Was, was and I also recall in Parima, because yeah. that was a fantastic testimony, and then also in Parima, with, um, where we met this girl that was demon-possessed. Yeah, she was. Yes, she was. and we had to go and we, we prayed. We pray and, and ask and God. And we interceded mm -hmm. to God on her mm -hmm. behalf. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recall that bef the next day, yes. the next day she was looking normal, yeah. you know, because they were so afraid she was actually suicidal mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of these things. You recall that? Yes, I remember when we were trying to pray, when the first, when we, when we got there, um, the, her grandmother was saying that she did not speak for about yeah. six weeks, you know, so while we, while we were on our way to meet, to pray with and pray for her, uh, when we got there, mm. she, I called her by name and she came out and she started speaking and the grandmother started crying because she Hallelujah. was saying that was over six weeks now. Yeah. She has not said a word oh, boy. Uh, because like the, the forces just hold her mouth mm. together. But you know, the presence of Jesus, yeah. um, when we prayed and we prayed and she was able to, at one point in time, she ran to the river to commit suicide. <sighs> and you know, we went after her and tried to talk to her and pray while we're talking. And then I ask everybody to just back off and allow God to do yeah. what he has to do. Doesn't that remind you of the story of the demoniacs? Yeah. Yeah, when Jesus prayed for them and he healed them of that yeah. demon and they were in their right frame, frame of, of minds. Mind. Yeah. Amen. When, when we left Pamrima, she was, was in, in her, her right, right frame, frame of, of mind. mind. Yeah. Amen. She was in her right frame of mind. But I thank God for these wonderful experiences. And uh, I just pray and ask God that, you know, People who are hearing about yes. Jesus, people who are hearing about God, log on to God, log on to mm. Jesus. He has not finished with me as yet. He's still working on me, yeah. but he could work on you the same way. Yes. You know, he could work on you the same way. Forget what you don't have. Forget what you have. Put your trust and confidence in Jesus because this COVID, it's going to get worse. Mm. COVID may go, but something else will we'll come. come yeah. But what you need, if you have God in your life, it removes the fear. I go to sleep like, mm. mm, -mm. Ask my wife, I go to sleep, I go to sleep. Yeah. And yeah. so you know COVID. Well, God says what? Yeah. He's our refuge and strength, mm -hmm. a very present help in time of trouble. Yeah. And just like in the testimony where this woman was able to pay off her bills, we yeah. know too that once we pray in faith, yes. God, God is God able to answer things. prayers. He does it. He is still in the miracle working business. And you can claim Philippians 4 19. Mm -hmm. The says what? My God shall supply all, all your needs, needs according to riches and glory Christ. through Christ Jesus. So, um, you just have a, a few minutes to just wrap up as we, yes, as we go for today. Well, I... This, so, just encourage somebody this, out there. This, this, <laughs> this, this, this year has been uh, a trying year for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and I, and on, the, on the next, and when we reach again, um, we'll even share some more testimonies of how God has worked and continue to work in people's life and in my life and mm -hmm. you know he wants to work in your life as well mm -hmm. so we are asking you give him the opportunity um you are waiting for god to do something for you but mm -hmm. he's waiting for you to do something for him which is reach out and touch mm -hmm. and he will you, it, you know? so god is good and he's just waiting on you to make a move you need to just do like zacchaeus position yourself even if you have to go on a tree position yourself and god is going to pass you and see you and say hey I'm coming to your house for tea. Yeah. I, I I know if we, if we give if we give my, yeah, we uh, give my husband time, he yeah. preaches right here. But that was th that's it for today, folks. Yeah. On 
a moment, a light moment with the evangelist. And we trust that God will continue to richly bless you. The best part about evangelism is seeing people give their yeah, hearts right. to the Lord. Oh, yeah. And in all these crusades, we have seen people, mm -hmm. big men, big women, children, young people, mm -hmm. give their lives to the Lord. And that is the most important, important yeah. and most beautiful thing. The most beautiful miracle is when someone says yes to Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Until next time, when we meet again for a light moment with the evangelist. Amen. Everybody and welcome to another wonderful night of uh, Let's Talk About Him online evangelistic series. We hope that you had a wonderful day and we hope that you have all you are all relaxed, set, and just waiting for the word 
of God. But if, you know, before we do that, I must let you know that we have been enjoying ourselves. Oh, uh, yes. The comments we are getting, um, we just want you to continue to pray for us. And even this young preacher, keep on praying for myself and the reader and for the entire team and even for Tobago. Amen, amen. Pray for the gospel to open up and to make waves throughout the entire world. For all those over the world, we just welcome you this evening. As we go very quickly, we remind you of our prayer tent, our virtual prayer tent. Uh, so we're just asking you if you have any challenges, if you are going through any problems, you don't have to mention your name. Just enter into the virtual prayer tent. All right. And we also have the numbers of the persons who you, we have placed there for you to get in contact with them. We have Pastor McKenzie, 2928415, uh, Pastor Passad, 2837999, the Evangelist Allen, that's me, 7930489, Pastor Otley, 2975670, Pastor Frederick, 7354076, uh, we have Elder Kerr, 4751416, and we have the prayer line that is there just in case you need prayer. And everybody need prayer. When you get into the prayer room, you don't have even to say your name. You go ahead, get in, you say good evening, you give the greetings, and you would like them to pray because you need a job, uh, you're going through stress, you would just like them to pray for you. So get on and let's get on with the word of God and just get in and let God do great things for you. As usual, uh, place the Bible text there for you uh, based on the message this evening. You, The texts are there on the screen. You can go write it down in your spare time, read it again. However, you need to continue to listen to the message because I maybe use a text or two inside and it's not written there. So that is just, it's, not, it's not there. So that is just for you to stay, keep in tune, you know, stay on, on top of the game as we would normally say. Um, this evening, I just want to shout out some people who have been sending messages uh, from in Trinidad, in, Ar in Aruka, in Mearo, in Rio Claro, in Arima. People are just logging on. And some persons who tuned in last night, I would just like to call you by name. We have Sharon Brown from Sandy Grande. We have uh, Christine Joseph from Grenada. We have Mike Brown from Nevis. We also have... Um, Orlean Hardy from New York and Cedra Lewis Beard also from New York. From Canada, we have Mavis Antoine and Ronzel Lewis all the way from Canada. And my aunt living there, they are watching as well. From Guyana, we have Samantha Benjamin and Vidwati Hines. And I was told that these persons or our neighbors are tuning in with a big box pastor. So they have, apparently that they are running the stream to a music system and the village is hearing what is going on. Lord Praise be to clear. God Lord and clear. God will do great things because his gospel need to go forward. Uh, Pastor Ashton O'Neill who logged in last night and Pastor Kern, Dr. Kern Tobias who logged in last night and for the non Seventh day Adventist pastors and members who logged in last night, we thank you for listening and we're glad that you are here again tonight so that God will do great things for you. Oh, my Bible is outside. Uh, raise your Bible this evening as we, as we use that, as we get to that. I hope somebody can get my Bible for me. Uh, I will wait a little bit. Uh, on Sunday will be our couple's night. All married couples are invited to be together on that night. Remember that the color is red. Mm. All right? Ask your spouse to stay at home and watch the program uh, with you, let them stay home and watch the program with you that night so that we could have a fantastic, wonderful time. All right, uh, yesterday I mentioned um, that I will just call a village in Tobago and the first person or the first couple that type their name and the amount of years that they have been married, you know, put it in the chat and we will have a gift for you. Yes, the gifts are coming and we will give you more information, but we are keeping your name so we give you more information on what is going on. All right. So this evening, I would like to call the village of Speyside. So the first non-Seventh Day Adventist couple from Speyside, I just want you to type your name in the box, in the chat, 
and when you type your name put the amount of years you have been married and we are going to give you a gift for that night because the gifts are for that night you can't use the gift before it is for that night all right so keep on logging in and we we are going to have a wonderful time in jesus name and last night uh, someone from Canaan, we have noted that there was a Kian Walker uh, stated that you'll be celebrating your anniversary on the 25th of September. All right, because it's your anniversary on the 25th of September, we are also going to ask you to get in contact with me. My number was on the screen. Get in contact with me, and we are going to give you a gift for that time as well. All right, so uh, my Bible, I, probably I left it in the van. Probably I left it in the van. Uh, we, will, we will work with that. Probably I left it in the van. So let's raise your Bible and let's use 119 division of the psalm and we will say it together after fall. 34, the word, uh, Psalm 119 verse 11. The word have I hid in my heart, Pastor Benjamin, uh-huh. that, that I, I might, not might not sin, sin against, against thee. thee. The word, thy word have I hid in, in my, my heart, heart that, that I, I might, might not sin, sin against, against thee. thee. This evening... I want to pray for those persons who are in abusive relationships. And I'm asking you to bow your heads with me as we pray for those persons who are in abusive relationship all over the world. Uh, Only God knows what you're going through. Only God knows what you're going through. So let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you, dear God, first for the gift of life. Father, we lift those persons who are suffering at the hands of an abusive husband, an abusive wife, brother, an abusive brother or sister. Mm. For the family is feeling the pain, dear God. I pray, dear God, that your Holy Spirit arrest the person who is performing these acts. Change their mind. Clean up their life. and Bring them to the place where they can uh, accept you and stop the abuse. For the victims, dear God, I pray, dear Father, that you comfort them and Give them a peace of mind and assurance that living for you and even understanding your power that you can do great things. Oh, yes. For those who are on the run because of an abusive husband, an abusive wife, an abusive mother, brother, sister. Father, I pray. Bring calmness in their life. For the abused who is thinking about taking their life. I pray that God in the name of Jesus that you refrain and remove yourself from those thoughts. Father, enter into their life. Take charge, dear God. And may your Holy Spirit and your grace do to them what we can't do. All the counseling we can give, Father, is only the Holy Spirit can get in the heart and change the heart. Father, we thank you. As I'm about to preach tonight, may the presence of your Holy Ghost rest upon me one more time. Preach through me. Preach the gap. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Signs are an indication of what is happening or going to happen. Reader, uh huh. Signs are used to indicate that something or someone is not where they should be or expected to be. Tell us. I know you might, or you may remember when you were parked in that area and the police wrecked your vehicle. Oh boy! Or gave you a ticket because you didn't follow the sign. Five hundred. Remember when you took that 
lane or that street that you were not supposed to enter. And mm. because you, 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 you veered off on probably left or the right, the police gave you a ticket. And all the pleading you plead with the father, police, uh, please forgive me. You know? All the beg, you, you mm. beg that policeman, you still got that ticket because you, you, you did not notice the sign or you ignored the sign. Huh. You got a ticket. Lord have mercy. A sign can be right in front of you and you don't recognize it because either you are not paying attention or you are preoccupied with something else. Huh. Signs were there when you were courting that man and your, your parents told you, girl, that man is possessive. Red that flag. kind of man will become your manager and huh. control your life. And you said, mommy, but he loves me. Oh, he, 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 he's doing all kinds of things for me. And, and as a result, I'm going to marry him. But the parents showed you all the signs that were there. And you ignored the signs. And now you are in a relationship that is abusive. You are in a relationship that you are trying to get out and you run back home to mommy run to the court uh, to get a protection order but you did see. ignore the signs oh boy sad mm, the sign the saying the saying goes in tobago uh, uh don't take bully fay uh, oh. in the night when you could have seen something in the day you don't don't, don't do that huh. amen the signs were there when that young woman you were courting or liming with lash out at you in a normal conversation and she threatened you because she said that I am so pretty and I am so beautiful and oh, I am curvaceous and if you don't it. give me what I want, I'm going to leave and find another yeah. man who could just give me what I want. The signs were there but you went ahead and you get married and now it's chaos and you are pushed to the point where you might even commit suicide or even take the woman's life. I tell you, no. Oh, don't do that but hmm. the signs were there mercy lord no you are in stress but even before i go and you are that person in such a situation the number is one eight six eight seven seven four seven seven two nine you could pause right now and go just call into the prayer tent just to get some prayers and then come back to listen to the message because even this message has some some things to do what you can't just miss uh. You're reading the signs you didn't read the signs you got the ticket because you didn't you want to pay attention. Your mind preoccupied. Yes, you felt something was right, but something was wrong. But you just... And you got the ticket. Oh, boy. Uh, signs, when we fail to recognize signs, we always pay a penalty. And I need huh. to say that again. When we don't recognize signs, we always pay a penalty. When Reach we it. don't recognize signs, huh. we end up in the wrong places and Thank God for his grace and mercy that he takes it out of those places sometimes. Yeah. When we fail to recognize signs, we get lost. And sometimes getting back on track causes pain. And getting back on track, sometimes we lose a lot of things. And getting back on track sometimes, it, it, it just puts us here. And where we should have been, we are not there because we did not follow the signs. Time we stayed. <laughs> sometimes when we follow we don't follow the signs we reach a dead end in our life when we don't follow the signs we we get into an ax we get into an accident and and we feel pain and i'm here to tell you this evening that you must just follow the signs because the signs are there to point you somewhere else when we fail to recognize the signs we are stuck in relationship with resentment and regrets and guilt and pressure this evening my sermon is entitled discerning the signs of the times and i want you to just sit back relax uh, and just just ask god God to for you to understand the message what we have here for you this evening Amen. Master reader Matthew chapter 16 reading from verse 1 through 3 the Pharisee also with the Sadducees came and tempted desiring him mm -hmm. that he would show them a sign from heaven mm -hmm. he answered and said unto them mm -hmm. when it is evening mm -hmm. he say it will be fair weather mm -hmm. for the sky is red mm -hmm. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, mm -hmm. for the sky is red and lowering. Mm -hmm. Oh, you hypocrites! Uh -huh. You can discern the face of the sky, mm -hmm. but can ye not discern the signs of the times? Mm -hmm. The sermon is entitled, what? Discerning the signs of the times. Uh -huh. This was Jesus. 
standing in front of the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. They are looking for a sign. But the sign was standing right in front of them. Oh boy. Sometimes, as I said before, the sign could be standing right in front of you and you don't recognize the sign. The sign is standing in front of you, preaching to you tonight, telling you about Jesus Christ and what he can do for you. And sometimes you fail to recognize the sign because your mind is preoccupied with something else. Uh. Jesus was standing right in front of them. And while they should have recognized the sign, they were starting to trap Jesus with something what he have said or what he should have said or what. Oh. He didn't we'll do see. sometimes as human beings we need to forget those negative things and focus on what is in front sometimes we look at a sign and we instead of we watch the sign and see what the sign is saying we are stunning that the sign is not straight oh we're stunning boy. that the sign is lean on one wow. side but i have news for you forget huh. if the sign lean it is pointing you at a certain direction because all the lean the sign may have been lean or are leaning still now if you don't follow the sign you will get in trouble oh yes so Jesus Christ was standing in front of the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They wanted a sign from heaven. Huh. Because they are looking, we, 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 we are looking for a sign to justify that this is the man. Huh. But while Jesus Christ is so tactful, he, is so, he was so tactful. He, he said, listen, you know how to read. The sky. Uh -huh. And tell when rain is coming. Huh. You know in the morning, like the meteorologist, you know everything about the weather. Huh. But signs that are right in front of you, you can't discern it. Let me drop this in one time. You know when to play the mark. Oh gosh. But yet, you can't see the things that are happening in the world today. Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ was the sign in front of the scribes and the Pharisees. And this evening, the Tobago mission is the sign preaching the gospel in front of you because something bad, something good, something indifferent is about to happen. And we just want you to know that if you continue to log on night after night, you will know what is about to happen. And we continue tonight and you will know what is about to happen. Signs are there to follow and signs are coming right in your bedroom uh -huh. right in your veranda uh -huh. right in your car yes. just for you to pay attention to what is going on uh -huh. amen uh, mr reader there are some signs that are taking place in the world today uh-huh with all that is going on with the covid that is going on and the amount of deaths that are taking place all over the world huh. people in their hearts are asking the question what is going on Mm. But we have news for you this evening. We have the answer for you this evening. After this message, you will know for sure what is going on, where you are, where you should be, and what is going to happen next. Mr. Reader, Matthew chapter 24, reading verse 3 to 8. The Bible says, mm -hmm. And as he sat upon a mount of olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, mm -hmm. when shall these things be? Uh-huh. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Reader, say that again. When? When shall these things be? Uh -huh. And what, what shall, shall be the be sign of, of thy coming? coming? And what? And the end of the world? And what? End of the world. And the end of the world. And what Jesus Christ said? And Jesus answered and said unto him, mm -hmm. Take heed that no man deceive you. Mm -hmm. For many shall come in my name, mm -hmm. saying, I am Christ, mm -hmm. and shall deceive many, mm -hmm. and he shall hear wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. See that he be not troubled, mm -hmm. for all these things must come to pass. It what must come, come to, pass. to pass? But the but the end is not yet. Say that again, Mister Reader. All these things must come mm -hmm. to pass, but, but the, the end, end is, is not, not yet. yet. Verse seven. For nation shall rise against nation, mm -hmm. and kingdom against kingdom. Mm -hmm. And there shall be famines, mm -hmm. and pestilences, mm -hmm. and earthquakes in diverse places. Uh -huh. All these are the beginning of sorrows. sorrows. Mr. Reader, the signs are there. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, the signs are there. The world is about to end. True. The world is about to end. Uh -huh. I say it again. The world is about 
to end. COVID is one of the things that is just passing through, but the world Destiny. is about to end. Uh -huh. When we look at Matthew, we have atmospheric or environmental and atmospheric signs. Uh -huh. You know that the sun is getting hotter. Oh boy. You know that there are fires all over the place. California. You know that the weather patterns are changing uh, month after month, year after year. Hurricanes are coming one after the other, destroying people's home and property and destroying life. The signs are there because the disciples ask Jesus Christ, when shall these things be at uh. the coming of the end of the world? And Jesus Christ lay out all these things underneath. And now we are going through them, the signs, the atmospheric signs. They are there and Jesus Christ is about to come. But he's waiting for some of us to get our lives ready. I'm saying this evening, the atmospheric signs are there. Huh. This world is coming to an end, Mr. Reader. The second signs I want to look at is the economic signs. Tell us, tell us. We have learned in Trinidad and Tobago that only over 10, almost 10 billion or just over 10 billion dollars were consumed in few months because of the COVID. Yes, we know that. But look how many persons also have lost their job oh, throughout boy. the entire world. The country, the world is crashing. The economic signs are there. Why they are there? Because the world is coming to an end. Huh. And COVID, Mr. COVID, I will put a handle on it. Huh. It's pushing the world faster into more economical disasters. Economic Lord disaster. have mercy. And what I've learned about this COVID is that COVID brought, brought out the, 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 true, the true man. Or, or, let, let me put it the right way. COVID. Or the introduction of COVID, we are now seeing people for who they are. Huh. Mercy People Lord. are more selfish and, and holding on to themselves. They don't care about nobody else. They just care about themselves. Huh. But there are some benefits of COVID. The mere fact that you are alive today, God loves you and wants to save you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The mere fact that COVID came put you, in a, put you in a position that you have to stay home. You can't go out because God knows that there are greater things that are coming. God allowed the COVID so that you could listen the gospel and have a chance to be saved in his eternal kingdom. Amen. God have allowed COVID so that the gospel can be preached. God have allowed COVID so that when you, you, you are in your home, you could pull your family together and said, hello, it's time to make things right. And I'm saying that based on this, there are a lot of families who are being abused because husband and wife, they are not custom being home together. But now since the COVID at the end, you can't go anywhere. You have to be home and stay with your husband or your wife and your children and make things right. COVID have oh, benefits boy. as well. Uh-huh. Uh, COVID had also, also taught us that we should be dependent on God. Oh, yes. Amen. Vaccine Amen. can't save you. Huh. Any form of vaccine that comes, it can't save you. But if you are anchored in God, oh, yes. God can save you. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ asked the disciples when the end of the world is going to come and Jesus Christ laid out. I have news for you this evening. I, I know there's a text in, in Jeremiah 12, 5 that says that if thou can run with the footmen and they have weary thee, how can I contend with horses? Oh, and boy. if the, the land and spaces, uh, are you with me there? Wherein thou hast treaded, they weary thee, then how thou in com how? will thou do in the swelling of Jordan. Hello, huh. if we Lord. can't run in these times, oh when greater trouble come, we will not be able to make it. That's why we are preaching to help you to get ready for the second coming of Jesus. COVID will come and go, but Jesus Christ is coming. Oh yes. Amen. Amen. When the curtain is drawn, the great controversy is taking place. Some of you are just seeing COVID, but this is what I'm seeing. When the curtain is drawn, huh. you are saying heaven. Some for heaven, some for hell. Great controversy is taking place behind it. Some will be saved, some will be lost. Oh. But what, 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 what Christ is saying, my people ain't ready yet. Huh. Because they are not disciplined. And I'm going to allow this thing to discipline them. 
Oh boy. And if you watch the Bible and watch how things navigate, that, that's how Jesus Christ deals with his people. If we are not disciplined, he gets some hard times so that you can know to rely on God. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, visiting friends from Australia, Jamaica, all over the world. The world is coming to an end. True. It's time to read the signs. The world is coming to an end. Uh, Mr. Reader, I look at the third sign, it's a relationship sign. Uh huh. Tell us. Let's read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. This know also mm-hmm. that in the last days perilous times shall come. Uh-huh. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Lovers of themselves. Lord have mercy. Mm-hmm. Covetous, mm-hmm. boasters, mm-hmm. proud, mm-hmm. blasphemers, disobedient to parents, uh-huh. unthankful, unholy, uh-huh. without natural affection, mm-hmm. truce breakers. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, mm-hmm. traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Ah, uh, Mr. Reader. One of the signs that Jesus Christ mentioned. And you could read it in, 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 in Matthew chapter 4 when you when you are in your spare time. He said the love of many. Wax cool. Shall wax cool. Huh. It's a hard thing to find a good friend these days. Oh boy. A good friend is rare. And for all those persons who have thousands of followers on Facebook and you're feeling alone or you're feeling that you can't get nobody to talk to, get rid of every single one of them and put Jesus alone on your Facebook page. Because if you have all these persons and you don't have a good friend, something is wrong. Watch that. There's a sign in relationship. It's, it's breaking up. And, 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 and the love of many, as Jesus Christ said, wax cold. Uh, people are just pretending. Lord have mercy. Some people are around you because of what they could get from you. As long as they can't get nothing from you, they don't want you as a friend. It's just like the prodigal son. Have a whole host of friends. Oh, but boy. when the money done, everybody done. gone. Uh-huh. I'm saying to you, the love of many have waxed cold. And that is a sign today. Huh. Lord have mercy. There are some persons who while they, they claim that you are a, they are a friend, they are stabbing you in the back. Oh boy. Some persons, why, why, why they claim that they are a friend, they are saying it with their mouth, but, 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 but their actions are not showing that they are some friends. They are only some friends who just want things from you. Huh. Oh. It's a sign because I believe it's a sign because Jesus Christ said it. And anything that Jesus Christ said, it will come to pass. Oh, it yes. is truth because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Yes. Lovers of themselves, they don't care about you. It's a sign of the end of time. Some, 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 some persons are like Judas. They claim to be your friend. Oh boy. This is gospel, you know. They claim to be your friend. But they are learning what you are doing. They are watching your movements. Oh boy. And they will sell you out for almost nothing. Small change. My grandmother said they will sell you out for eight ni copper. No, 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 you, you don't, I don't know if you know that old people term. Nah, Granny nah. said they would sell you out for eight copper. It means, therefore, that the money that they are going to sell you out for is so low that it can't even do anything. Five and one cents. Can't even do anything. It's a sign of the end. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, the world is about to come to an end. And it's time that we read the signs that are right before our eyes. Amen, amen, amen. And the fourth sign I want to look at this evening is the spiritual sign. Oh, yes. Pastor Benjamin, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. What does it say? Having a form of godliness, Mm -hmm. but denying the power thereof. Mm -hmm. From such, turn away. There are persons who claim that God is big. Oh, boy. But when time to do big things for God. They say, nah, God can't do that. Mercy. There are persons who are claiming that they are carrying the name of God. 
But when God, and you see the actions, and this is not judging as some people may even think, because the Bible says, let your light so shine. Oh, yes. And if, 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 if we have to see the light, then we have to watch. Uh-huh. The Bible says that bring forth fruit. And if the fruit have to come forth, we need to see. Oh, yes. That's why the Bible said, listen, if you believe in God, and you believe that he could do great things, praise God and give him the glory and allow him to do great things in your life and for you. I have to to let you know this evening that there are some persons who are denying the power of God. They don't believe that God still control this world. But this evening I want you to know that God is still in control of this world. Don't deny God and Uh say God can't do it. Yes, he can do anything. The Bible says anything too hard for the Lord to do. Nothing is too hard for the Lord Uh to do. Amen. But the sign that I love Mr. Reader so much. Oh, yes. It's taken from Matthew uh-huh. chapter 24. Yes. Read that for me, Mr. Reader. Verse 14. Verse 14. What does it say? And this gospel mm, of the and, kingdom. And what? And this gospel mm-hmm. of the kingdom mm-hmm. shall be preached in all the world mm-hmm. for a witness mm-hmm. unto all nations. Mm-hmm. And then shall the end come. Mm-hmm. And then shall the end come. I don't know about you, but it's because of COVID. Uh-huh. That's why you're home. Oh, yes. It is because of COVID. That's why you're listening to the gospel. Uh-huh. The Bible said this gospel of the kingdom oh, shall be yes. preached in all the the world for a witness uh-huh. and then the end shall come oh, if yes. you don't choose to give your life to jesus it doesn't matter but he's gonna pay in jesus but it can't stop the gospel from uh-huh. going forward it will not stop jesus from coming this gospel shall be preached for oh, a witness yes. uh-huh. amen can say i didn't know a few nights before i told you how a man how he gave his life to jesus hello it is good to give your life to Jesus. The handwriting, as we would say, are on the wall. The signs are right in front of you. Jesus Christ is about to come uh-huh. and he will bring an end to this world. Jesus Christ is about to come and he will bring an end to this world. I need to say that again. Jesus Christ is about to come and he will bring an end to this world. Oh, yes. Sometimes when God gives you a dream and talk to you in a dream, instead of you taking the dream and interpret it, you 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 you, you go on by the playway base oh, and the boy. playway boot and you pull out ah, the wrong number oh, but what I want you to pull out ah, what I want you to pull out this evening uh-huh. is number 12 because that is what you should have been playing all the time because 12 is the king and I want you to know that the king is coming I don't know about the other <laughs> mark you may want to play but if you play the 12 the king is coming Mercy but I want God. you to rest the playway in a corner and put your eyes on Jesus put your eyes on the king of king and the lord of lord because he's coming again to take his people home. The Bible says that when he come, that the elements of the world will melt. Us. Oh boy, fervor and heat. The king is coming. Jesus is coming again. And these are the signs that are in the world. The signs are right before your eyes. Oh, yes. COVID has given you the opportunity to be saved in God's kingdom. Because it, it, if it was not for COVID, you would have not been home watching the gospel. Huh. Listening to the gospel. You're, you would not have been praying, Oh God, protect me. And God is merciful. He will protect you. Oh God, keep me from all the disease that are going on. And God is merciful. Oh, yes. He's going to do it for you. Uh-huh. Because he wants to save you. Amen. But Pastor Benjamin, the question I'm asking this evening, and to the listeners, where is the devil in all of this? Oh boy. Question. Sometimes when we read the Bible, we read it at face value. We read it and just cross over things. But where is the devil in all of this? Where is the devil? He knows that Jesus is about to come. Uh-huh. He, has a short he time. knows that the world is coming to an end. Yes, he knows. Where is he? Luke chapter 8. And verse 14. This is what the devil is doing to some people. Luke chapter 8 and verse 14. What does it say, Mr. Reader? And that which fell among thorns mm-hmm. are they which are they 
which when they have heard mm -hmm. go forth and are choked with cares mm -hmm. and riches and pleasures of this life mm -hmm. and bring no fruit to perfection hold on there mr reader when the sower went forth to sow his seed uh -huh. he threw the seed scattered the seed some fell but the bible says and they which fell among thorns that's the seed when they have heard they go forward and will choke with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life oh boy. there is the devil choking some of you with the pleasures of this life choking some of you with the cares of this life so as a result you can't bring forth no fruit to perfection your life is not advancing because the devil is right there choking you huh. Luke chapter 21 and verse 34 what does it say Mr. Reader and take heed to yourselves mm -hmm. and take what and take heed Jesus to Christ yourselves is talking. Jesus Christ is talking take mm -hmm. heed to yourself let's at lest at any time mm -hmm. your hearts be overcharged with so with suffeting mm -hmm. and drunkenness and cares of this life mm -hmm. so that a day come upon you unawares mm -hmm. brothers and sisters my visiting friends Jesus Christ is saying hello take heed take heed Go back to the text for me. Take heed. Take heed to yourself. That your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life. Huh. And so that the day of God come Catch upon you unawares. you unawares. Lord of mercy. What Jesus Christ is saying. That you are studying so much, especially the cares of life. Oh boy. I have my children to take care of. I have my God. husband to take care of. I have this to do. And I have that to do. I'm trying to make ends meet. But what Christ is saying, you need to be careful because there is an enemy that is right there waiting to destroy you. Huh. Oh yes, what he needs to do is just to tell you, you are doing what the Bible said to take care of your family because if your family if you can't take care of your family you are worse than an infidel oh yes the same god the same jesus christ that wrote those things he knew that as well but he said listen you need to be careful what christ is really telling you watch the signs and put yourself in position because all that i'm telling you i'm able to take care of you oh, you don't yes. need to do fighting down with the cares of life if you fix my business i'm gonna fix your business ladies and gentlemen you who are watching me this evening if you fix god business god gonna fix your business amen the signs are there the signs are there when jesus comes listen when jesus comes and he's coming again when jesus comes he will bring an end to sin oh yes when amen. jesus comes when jesus comes he will bring an end to sin and he will bring an end to this world he's coming for a prepared people oh, yes. when jesus comes again if you are destroyed if you are destroyed with the world it is because that you was not preparing for jesus christ coming uh, uh, there's a oh, there's a line that i use if you are not looking for jesus he's not coming for you <laughs> but i want you to look for jesus i want when he comes he will take you home and i'm encouraging you this evening you need to seek the lord while he may oh, be yes. found Amen. you need to call upon while uh, he's call, call 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 upon the, his name while he's near. You need to be there. Your first line of business is to work out your salvation with trembling. Oh, yes. And with fear. Uh huh. The urgency is there. Uh huh. Because things are happening fast. It's COVID has just taken a few months and look where we are. Everything is almost crashed. It is happening fast and Jesus Christ is going to burst the clouds of glory fast as well. You need huh. to put yourself and get yourself in order. Amen. Amen. The signs are there. I know for some people. I know for some people. You don't care. Some don't care. They just want to get back to life normal. Huh. Because you're studying your career. You're studying your business. But God have allowed your business to pause. Because salvation is your business. Amen. Amen. Your life, eternal life, is God's business and he wants to save you. You may ask me what to do. But I simply have to tell you this evening. You need to prepare 
to meet thy God. Oh, yeah. The signs are there. The disciples ask the question, you need to prepare to meet God when he comes again. Uh, the Bible says in, 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 in Daniel chapter 12 and, and verse 1, and, and Mr. Reader, read that there for me. Daniel chapter at, 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children mm. of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. A such a time of trouble. We are not in the time of trouble, Mr. Reader. Uh-huh. We are not there as yet. Oh, boy. We are not, people, we are not there as yet. I'm pleading with you this evening. We are not there as yet. There is a time of trouble that is coming. Continue, Mr. Reader. And there shall be a time of trouble mm -hmm. such as never was mm -hmm. since there was a nation even to that same time. Mm -hmm. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Mm -hmm. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Found where? Written in the book. That is the Lamb's book, book of life. Of life. Uh -huh. That time is soon to come upon us. And if your name is not in the Lamb's book of life, you will not be delivered. Huh. I said, if your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, you will not be delivered. That's why God sent us here to preach to you so that your name could be in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, yes. You may say, preacher, how do I get my name in the Lamb's book of life? The answer to that question is by giving your life to Jesus through baptism and start living and walking for Jesus Christ because there's a time of trouble that is coming and when that time of trouble starts you may not get the time to put your name oh, in the Lord. Lamb's book of life Mercy. because there may be no preacher in your village there may be no pastor preaching the word of God but huh. now is the opportunity oh, to put yes. your name in the Lamb's book of life Amen. and secure your salvation that's why the Bible said I said it before and I say it again you need to work out your salvation with trembling yeah, and fear trembling uh-huh Amen. More hurricanes will come. More tornadoes will come. More floods will come. But if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, God will protect you because your name have already inscribed in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Economic collapse. More of them will come. Huh. You may even lose your job, but God will take care of your needs oh, yes. because your name are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Heart maybe will, will be failing them for fear, but your heart will be strong in the Lord oh, yes. because where your name is, it's uh -huh. in the Lamb's book of oh, life. Yes. When your family and friends and all the loved ones forsake you, you will have a heart that is strong and know that there's a man and a brother and a man who stick it closer than a brother uh -huh. Christ Jesus. Oh, because yes. Because where is your name? Your name is in the oh, Lamb's right. book of life. Uh -huh. Put your name in the Lamb's book of life so that you can be saved from the drama and the wrath of God to come. Amen. Well, this evening, you need to get your name in the Lamb's book of life. The signs, the signs, the signs are there. Even the blind man can see the signs. Yes. True. Even the blind man can see the signs. I look at a trailer, I think it's 2067 or some movie supposed to come out soon. They recognize that something is about to happen and even they are trying to preserve life. But the only way you could preserve your life is when your life is wrapped up and tied up and inscribed in the Lamb's book of life, ladies and gentlemen. You who are watching me like you have never heard this message before, thank God you are right there. I could feel your presence that you are right there saying that I need to get my name in the Lamb's book of life because I want to be saved from the wrath to come. I love Jesus, but I put my name in the Lamb's book of life. I know God can do great things for you. You in your porch, you in your couch, you inside your car, you by the block who's listening, the persons in Patience Hill, the persons in Guyana who are listening uh -huh. through the box. I'm telling you, you need to get your name in the Lamb's book of Hallelujah. life. Hallelujah. Amen. And after you get your name in the Lamb's book of life, I need to tell you something. Because the Bible don't teach one save, always save. Uh. So I need to tell you something. After you put your name, and I want you right now to go in the chat and say, Look, type in the chat, I want to put my name in the Lamb's book of life. And leave a contact number. Leave a contact number. And put, we will call you, talk to you. 
pray with you because your, your name need to be in the Lamb's book of life. Mr. Amen. Reader, our final text as we close. Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 11 through 14. After, Mr. Reader, uh-huh. they have placed their names in the Lamb's book of life. This is what God is asking to continue the process. Read, Mr. Reader. For the grace of God. For the what? For the grace for the of grace God. For the grace of God. Continue. That bringeth salvation, salvation. Had appeared. Salvation. Had appeared to all men. Mm-hmm. Teaching us that by denying ungodliness mm-hmm. and worldly lust, mm-hmm. we should live soberly. We should live what? Soberly. Soberly. What's the next word after that? Righteously. And what's the next word, Mr. Reader? And godly yes. in God. this present Say world. Say that again in that last line. In where? In, in this, this present, present world. world. The disciples asked the question, uh, Jesus, when would you come again? Huh. He gave. And Mr. Rita continue with verse, with verse 13. What does it say? Looking for, for that, that blessed book. hope. Mm-hmm. And a glorious appearing. And a glorious appearing. Uh-huh. Of, of our great God and our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ who who gave, gave himself for us. That he might redeem us mm-hmm. from all iniquity and purify unto himself mm-hmm. a peculiar people, mm-hmm. zealous of good works. Oh, Mr. Pre- Mr. Reed, I'm looking for the blessed hope uh-huh. and the glorious appearing yes. of our great God and, and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. Looking Christ's. for the blessed Amen. hope. The disciples asked the question, uh-huh. uh, what are the signs? <laughs> we gave you the signs in the Bible because he said to you, before you come again, we gave you the signs and we are reading now what you should do. You should live soberly. Uh-huh. You should live righteously. Uh-huh. You should live godly. Oh, and yeah. where are you supposed to live? And when? In this present That's world. Well. Right now in 2020. That's how you're supposed to live. Because God expects you to live that way. Because he's coming again. Oh, and yes. he's coming for you. And he's coming for me. Get your name in the Lamb's book of life. And be saved from oh, the yes. wrath to come. Amen. Amen. This evening. My young friend is going to sing that song because the grace of God, the grace of God, the grace of God. That's how we are saved by grace through faith, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace we are saved through faith, not of yourself, it's a gift from God. Not of works, lest any man should Should boast. boast. So we're going to sing that song. One, listen to this verse. And you who, Seventh-day Adventists, if you know the song, Sing this song while you're home. Hold your family hand. Hold your hands together. And let us sing that song. Go ahead, my sister. Loving Lord, grace that exceeds oh, yeah. our sin and our guilt. Regardless of what you have done. Yonder on Calvary. Jesus' blood. Outpoured there where the blood of the Lamb was pure. Let's sing the song. Grace, grace, God's grace. God's grace. God's grace gonna cleanse you. Grace that will pardon Free you from all that sin. You need to get your name in the Lamb's book of life, regardless of what you have done. God's grace is sufficient for you. And His grace is able to cleanse us from all of us. Come on, you ain't sin. Feel like giving up. Shredding in your soul. As we look to the cross, to the, refuge, the mighty cross. Oh, let's sing that song together. Grace, my grace, God's grace for you. Oh, it's there to cleanse you, cleanse you from within and come on. God's grace is sufficient. For us. God's grace. grace that is greater than all. Awesome. 
Let's sing that third stanza together. Marvelous. Marvelous infinite man. Regardless of who you are, freely bestowed. All you need to do is believe. All you need to do is believe. Type in that chat. Call somebody that you want to start a new walk with God. You want to give your life to Jesus. Will you this moment receive his grace because he's pouring out his grace for you now. Grace, man. God's grace is good for you. To pardon and cleanse from within. Come on, man. Type in the chat. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want my name to be in the Lamb's book of life. God's grace is sufficient for you. Come on. God's grace has cleansed me. Hello. Grace is greater than all of your sin. I said grace. My sister, we're going to sing the first stanza again. Grace is greater. I said he's greater. Grace, God's grace is greater than all your sins. You have killed. You have robbed. You have done all sorts of things. But God's grace is sufficient for you. Someone asks me, Rajav, after all those bad and nasty things I do, all I got to do is come to Jesus and ask for forgiveness and I mean it. And I said, yes, because his grace is sufficient for us. Put your name in the Lamb's book of life. The signs that are there, the signs are there. We are seeing them right before our eyes. COVID is is going to rip us apart. There are more things that are going to rip us apart. But God has sent us here this evening to preach to you so that you can discern the signs of the times and put your name in the Lamb's book of life so that you can be seen. Come on, my sister. Let's sing the first stanza again. Come on, somebody. Put those numbers running across the screen. Put those numbers. Thank you, gentlemen. Put that number, those numbers running across the screen. Yonder. Or on Calvary's mountain. There where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. There where the blood of the Lamb. Oh, everybody singing together. I can hear you from home. Grace. God's grace. Grace that will pardon. And cleanse from within. I can hear you from home. Singing and give the preacher some encouragement. Sing that song for me. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. Grace that is greater than all This evening I appeal to you. I appeal to you this evening. Put your name in the Lamb's book of life. Type in the chat. I want my name to be in the Lamb's book of life. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need your name to be in the Lamb's book of life. You need prayer. You in your abusive relationship, you need prayer. Come, type, call with somebody. We are here for you. The signs are there. Will you be a sign by not accepting Jesus? Because the Bible said there are some who are just scoffers. Would you be a sign? Tonight I encourage you to be a sign by putting your name in the Lamb's book of life. Let us pray, loving Father. Oh God, I thank you for your words, oh God. In this world where we have no proper direction, but if we look in your word, we preach about your Bible last night. If we look in your word, that God we can find direction. The disciples ask the question. When shall the coming of the son of man be? And the end of the world. Jesus you said it. And, and verse Matthew 24 and verse 8 says. Jesus you said it. You said it. And I believe you Jesus. You said all these things that are happening, COVID and all these things, are just the beginning of sorrow. Father, if this is the beginning of sorrows and we are feeling so many pain, so many heartaches, so many loss of job, Lord, what is to come? That's why we need to put our names in the Lamb's book of life. If you have not done so before, put your name in the Lamb's book of life. So God can protect you. So God can save you. So God can provide for you all that matters right 
now it's your salvation. Come on, man. Start working out your salvation. Make that step for Jesus. Make that step for Jesus. Put your name in the Lamb's book of life. Send a message to the child. Loving Father, may you seal the decision of those who have just typed and those who have just made up in their mind that they want to follow you. Seal that decision there, God. And give them the strength. Give them the courage. Give them Holy Ghost power to make the decision. To complete the decision so that they will give their life to you. We thank you again one more time. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace is sufficient. All the sin you have committed, God is willing to forgive you. But you need to ask him. You need to accept his grace so that you could be saved in his eternal kingdom. Thank you tonight. My sister, you have a lovely voice. Keep on singing, my sister. Keep on singing. Let's sing verse 2. Second stanza. Second stanza. Keep on singing, my sister. Sin and despair like the sea waves cold Bread in the soul with infinite loss Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold to the refuge of my Thank you.